welcome or welcome back to my channel hey see books i'm camilla and today i'm doing a tag that i've been very excited to do but it's taking me a while to get to it it is the hashtag stand with trans kids tag and i was tagged by leo bancroft he did the original tag months ago um that's when he tagged me i think that was in april sorry it's taking me so long but i'm finally here i've prepared like some great answers i want to like be able to give like a broad um recommendation of books and tv shows and everything so here i am and we're gonna jump right into this tag uh i switched the questions the last and first question so question 10 question number one because i wanted to do a bit like leo and start with shouting at organizations so the 10 question but i'm doing it as a first question is what are some organizations you'd like to shout out for supporting trans kids and trans folks and I basically decided, because I'm in Canada right now, I decided to highlight a an organization in Montreal where I'm from and where I currently am, and also one in Scotland where I live at the moment as well, where I've lived for the last 10 years. So the first one is Jeunesse Lambda. This is a mostly like French organization. Um, it is a community organization in Montreal and it was created by um, queer youth, like LGBT, um, youth and for them as well. So it is, yeah, created and for queer youth, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and questioning kids from 14 to 30. So they do some events and stuff like that in Montreal, and I thought that I would shout them out, but also in the vein of Leo, I thought I would donate to these organizations. So I'm donating to Jeunesse Lambda and to the next one, which is the Scottish one, which is LGBT Youth Scotland. I found them through the Scottish Trans Alliance and they are a community organization as well and their aim is to make Scotland a great place to grow up as part of the LGBTI community. So they support kids from 13 to 25. So I'll be donating to this one as well. So I want to just start with that and start with just encouraging people to donate as well if they can, especially if they do this tag. But it's great to shout out organization and it's great to also just do some research. I had never really done any research into it. And it was, um, I guess, eye-opening to see what's available out there and what kind of support they give. And yeah, so I think that's a great way to start. So let's start into the questions. And the question number two is, tell us about some books on your TBR pile featuring a trans and non-binary character or non-fiction about trans and non-binary stuff. So I have quite a few that I want to mention. I won't go into what they're talking about or like a summary but these are just some of the books that I've had on my TBR. So Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar has been on my TBR forever and I keep seeing it like pop up in my library app and I just haven't picked it up yet but it is definitely on my list. I've heard some great things about it so one day I'll definitely get to it. A highly anticipated read to me is I've just seen that the sequel to Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas has been announced so I'm very excited for that. I cannot wait for the second one to come out. Then Detransition Baby by Tori Peters has been on my list for a while, but I've not heard great, well, I've heard mixed reviews, basically. Some people adored it, some people hated it. So I don't know what to think about it. This kind of, that means that this one has fallen down my TBR pile a little bit, but may give it a try at some point. But if it's not getting really good reviews from trans folks, then I'm not sure if it's the best one, but we'll see. Next is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. That cover just really kind of sparked my interest. I thought it was really kind of interesting. And so like, yeah, I added it to my TBR. Um, and I've been hearing some great things about it, which is good. Uh, next is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This one sounded really interesting. It sounded like a romance book, which you know I'm all about. And it is, uh, I think it's between two chefs and one of whom is non-binary. So interesting. And the last one, and that's the one I'm kind of a bit embarrassed to say because it's been on my tbr slash actual reading pile for about a year in this the transgender issue by sean Fay. i saw um her at the book festival the edinburgh book festival last year and so i got an arc from that galley read like the first half like almost immediately and it is really good and i feel like i've learned a lot but for some reason i kind of put it down and I haven't been reading a lot of ebooks this year so I need to get back to it and hopefully I'll finish it this year. Yeah. The next question is recommend a favorite book, show, movie, 
featuring a trans and non-binary character. Okay, I've just reread that and realized that it says one, like a favorite one. My list, I think I have, I think I have 10 recommendations. I'm just going to go through it, whatever. These are all great shows and books, so yeah. Book-wise, I actually only have one. This is a booktube channel, I swear. Book-wise, one of my favorite books of 2021, and I've already mentioned it, was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This was such a good book, great representation, with the main character being a trans boy uh, who's a brujo, so it has to do with a little fantasy and magic, and it has other queer representation. And it also has amazing, like, a Latino representation, which was really good for me. That was a recommendation from Leo. So yeah, that was a really good one, and I'm really looking forward to the second one. And then I wanted to recommend some TV shows because I actually watch and consume a lot of television. Uh, and yeah, like a lot. A lot. <laughs> um, I read a lot, but I also watch a lot of TV. So I have quite a few of them. In terms of TV, here I wrote, my biggest recommend is Sensei. Uh, I actually freaking love that show. It is so, so good. Um, I think it may have been the first time that I saw trans actor and trans character on TV, well as a trans character anyway, uh, and it's also just a diverse show just generally, it has obviously queer characters and it has characters from all over the world and they're all connected somehow, you have to watch it to understand how they're connected, it's a little bit sci-fi, it's a little bit like crime, it's a little, actually a lot romance, it has some really graphic sexes, <laughs> but it's a really good show and yeah I think it's a good one to watch. Um, other ones, well, might be a bit silly, but I quite enjoyed Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, Sex Education as well has some good, like, just generally queer representation. One Day at a Time, I watched that show, obviously it has Latino representation, but I think that may be the show that introduced me to a non-binary character for the first time, which is embarrassing because I was probably like 25 when I watched that, but yeah, so that was really good. Um, oh yeah, I can't! Obviously, be talking about TV shows without talking about Heartstopper. Obviously, a heartwarming TV show. It addresses and talks about so much, and yet it is so positive and so hopeful. And you might know from other videos that I've done that I love like a hard-hitting storyline or something, but to me, it has to end with a little hopefulness, or I don't think I'm going to enjoy the experience as much. And I feel like it just shows that you have you know, that hope for things to get better or things to just be okay. And I think that does it really well. And my last highlight and recommendation is sort of, it is a Canadian sitcom, actually. It's centering a non-binary Pakistani Canadian millennial <laughs> character, Sabi, um, who works as a sort of child care giver, nanny person. And they're trying to find out what they want and what they want to do and who they are, I guess, and they kind of get a bit of conflict with their Muslim family, but it was so good, and I just heard that it was renewed for a second season, so I'm looking forward to that as well. All right, now we're on question number four, which is, everyone has their own journey, and no one demographic is a monolith. Recommend a book with a journey, however you define that. I actually really struggle with defining journeys, so obviously the first journeys that came to me were very literal, and I feel like fantasy and sci-fi I guess use journeys very much in books so obviously I was like you can't talk about a journey without talking about Lord of the Rings and stuff like that Wizards of Earthsea, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, uh, I wrote Station Eleven, Binti, Song of Achilles you know they all have these journeys uh, that are quite literal as in like you're going somewhere uh, it's also similar but maybe a bit more contemporary and relevant to us is um the journeys of refugees, so you have The Crossing by Amanjit Man and The Map of Salt and Stars. I've forgotten the name of that uh, author, I'm so sorry. I'll put it obviously in the description box below, but also I, I will be putting the image right here so you'll be able to see it. And that's a journey that's important to me because obviously I have family that were refugees, but I think it's also one that is more contemporary, more, uh, well, I guess more talked about now and it's so important to see and talk about and uh, be understanding of. And finally there are I guess two more books that I enjoyed over the last few years that are about a sort of self-discovery or um, self 
I don't know how to say it, but a journey of the self, a journey for yourself and within yourself. Uh, the first one is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I think that, you know, it says it in a title almost. It's a journey of becoming. And it was, I thought, a fabulous nonfiction. And the other one is Soar in Bliss by Meg Mason, which I've just read for the Women's Prize for Fiction, short list and long list. And that was also, I think, quite a big journey, you know, for mental health and uh, within herself and within her relationship and her family. So generally all very good books. Question number five is, none of us knows everything even about our own identities, especially since we're not a monolith, and each have our own journey. What is a book that taught you something either about yourself or the world around you? The first one I thought about was Quiet by Susan Cain. This book, I feel like, taught me so much about myself. I think I read it at a time where I was just coming out of university, and I kind of... I don't know, I wasn't as confident. Like, it had eroded my confidence a little bit. And I read that, and I kind of understood... The way that I recharge and my relationship with people, it is about basically being an introvert and the, not benefits, but the positive aspects of being an introvert, which I'd never really heard about before. And it's funny because I actually um, immediately recommended it to my parents who were both introverts and they watched and they read it and they really enjoyed it as well. And it kind of changes your outlook on yourself and your relationship with people in the world, I guess. So that was really good. Uh, another one that I think really made me realizing was Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee. This is nonfiction as well. Uh, about, I think it's rediscovering your origin through geography. And so she goes to um, her parents' country, I guess, where they, they well, not where they grew up because they wrote from China. I think it's Taiwan, actually. And so she goes there and she kind of through the mountain and through like um, the geography, the ecology, like the plants and everything she kind of learns about how her family grew up and her roots in that way, literally and metaphorically, you know. And I guess it made me realize how between cultures I've been and like how I feel about it and what I would like to rediscover about it. And I've craved that a lot. And I think that that book is expressed that beautifully. And generally, I think loads of books have made me realize, I guess, biases or opinions that I've held and maybe that I need to reflect on or that I need to educate myself on and I think that's the beauty in books I guess sometimes it puts a mirror in front of you and you're just like oh yeah <laughs> or it kind of makes you realize things and that's yeah that's that's so great and that's why I read as well I read for entertainment and, and you know joy and good things you know and good feelings but also sometimes I just want to learn you know about it I'm a very curious mind like that question number six is when things are hard in the world and in our lives sometimes there are things we can do to help center and refocus ourselves to bring joy, to keep us going, to keep living, re resisting, being our authentically, authentically, sorry, <laughs> amazing selves. What are things you do to center yourself and find joy? Uh, one of those things is running for me. I've discovered that, well, a couple of, maybe four years ago, I started running actually. And, but really throughout the pandemic, I think it's something that I've used as a bit of control because there's nothing you can control during the pandemic, but as something to also release, to feel better about myself, you know, it takes me out of my mind sometimes. I can just have to go out there, you know, and move and do the distance. And that's been something that's been really positive about the last two years. The second thing that I do is dancing. I've always been a dancer since like, I want to say like daycare, you know, like I've always taken dance classes and it's something that I feel has, I, I realize took me out of my anxiety for a long time and made me focus on my body and kind of helps clear my mind and then I can just feel and just yeah hear the music and dance and I just absolutely love it and it's such a beautiful form of expression but also of just self embodiment also so I really really adore that um I took even during pandemic I took some like online classes and that was really just for fun and it was so good you know just in the living room so really really fun about that and also you know I write I read uh, I puzzle, I make these videos, all of this I think makes me happy, it m makes me take some time for myself as well and I've been kind of focusing on that uh, recently, like enjoying these things that I do because I love them. All right, question number seven is what what's your walk-on music or your feel at home in your body music? Uh, obviously I just said I'm a dancer so I, any theme song that I can move is a song that I probably enjoy, if I can just kind of 
go with it, it's great and I love it. I especially love songs that make me feel like my body is kind of going to the air and that's difficult to explain but I guess it's a kind of beat that is very like transcendent so I really like that and I just love them you know I just love to dance um some specific songs I wanted to highlight and it's really funny because I wrote this down and I realized there's one for I guess each country that I've lived or I'm from so the first one is from a Scottish band called Talisk it's called Montreal which funnily enough is such a good it's just instrumental uh kind of traditional Scottish music it's really really good love it I'll put a link below so you can go and listen to them as well the second one is Gracias a la Vida written by I guess the person I'm named after Violeta Parra a Chilean uh composer and like writer singer a folk singer uh, but performed by Mercedes Sosa, so that's a good one. And the last one is On va s'aimer encore, We'll Keep Loving Each Other by Vincent Vadia, which is from Quebec. And that was actually uh, our first dance at our Quebec wedding was on that song. And I, I love it, it's so beautiful and I feel like it's like a hug of a song. I just love it. Question number eight is finding mentors, people of wisdom or heroes can be another way to help us navigate life. Who are some of your mentors? Can you share something they taught you or inspired you to learn more about? This one is really difficult actually because I don't feel like I've had mentors. But one person I'm going to mention is Helen. I won't say her last name. But she was someone I worked with, God, maybe eight years ago. And she really taught me a lot. Uh, she was in one of my first jobs in the UK. And I was really like lacking confidence. And she really helped bolster my confidence and um I learned a lot from her and she was telling me like she would really give me good motivation speeches and I just I've kept like a really warm place in my heart for her we're still friends on Facebook and stuff but we don't talk as much as we should so her is she's one of those people another one is actually I mean not to be a bit cliche but I think my mother has been a really really great example for me uh, she's this really strong woman and I don't know I have a really good relationship with her especially much more since adulthood and it's just really good um to talk to her about things you know sometimes you just need to talk things out and I know that with her you can kind of hash things out and I can learn a lot from her and I've learned a lot from her for the last 30 some years so yeah um I'm sure I have loads of other people that I've learned from but they're the two women that I'm thinking of right now um, and there's loads of other women that have been very, very influential in my life, um, but I won't list them all. But obviously, like, some of my cousins, aunts, like, family friends, um, even some of my friends, like, some of them, I'm, I love the way that they take leap of faith or that, you know, decisions that they've made to move abroad or, you know, all of these different things that I just absolutely look up to and it inspires me in my daily life question number nine is who are some trans non-binary booktubers instagrammers authors actors who you'd like to shout out well okay so uh already i'm kind of shouting out by doing a bit this tag but like the first one i want to shout out is leo bancroft obviously for kind of tagging us all into this and making us talk about this like thank you so much and i love your content uh, another booktuber I'm gonna mention is Willow from Books and Bow. Their reviews are always so informative, like they do reviews really well and that's why I go back to watch their content. So so good. Um, and I especially like their content on international literature, which you know I love, and also especially like Asian literature. So a, a booktuber to watch for sure. And another uh, YouTuber, not quite booktuber, but YouTuber, uh, that I watch is Verily Bitchy. <laughs> um, I really enjoy their content. I discovered them through their, what was it called? Uh, Taking Back Harry Potter video, which was, I guess, about, um, well, there's censorship, but it was also about, uh, like, copyright and f fan fiction and, like, all of that participation and reclaim, like, re taking back and reclaiming um, characters and storylines and creativity you know these creative worlds uh for ourselves and i absolutely loved it 
and I've watched a lot of their other content, which has a lot of them stuff about representation, about TV shows and about sexuality. So, and it's kind of article-like in their videos. So yeah, a very, a, a one, another one worth watching for sure. Uh, and those are the three that I wanted to shout out uh, in this video. And finally, I guess it's question number one. I've put it in question number 10. It is tag some fabulous friends who would also may want to do this tag and hashtag stand with trans kids. So I'm encouraging all of you to do this tag if you want. Um, it's a good one to, you know, just show, show, show support. But also, I actually love to go back and think about the TV shows I watch or books and stuff like that to recommend. Uh, so that was really cool. So I recommend all of you. But I'll tag a few people specifically. So there's a four that I would like to tag. So there's Jen the Librarian, uh, Elle from Elle Thinks, Lisa in Bookland, and Meg from Pride and Fiction. And also, <laughs> I've decided to go for it and tag a few big channels. Look, I follow them, I like their content. I don't think they're gonna see this, and if they do see this, they might just be like, whatever, someone's tagged me. <laughs> uh, but I thought, why not, you know, uh, I have nothing to lose, and why not encourage, you know, encourage that. So here it is. There's Jess Owens, uh, Sajid from Books Are My Social Life, Olive from A Book Olive, and Jack Edwards, because why not shoot for the booktuber that has a million followers um, and doesn't do tags, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going all out here. Um, but yeah, all the people that I've mentioned obviously are people that I follow. Uh, go check out their channels if you want. Um, but thank you so much for you know watching and listening to me as i've done this tag and don't hesitate to do it let me know if you've done it um i saw that leo actually has a whole uh playlist with people who've done this tag so you can go and watch other people's responses i've watched a couple already and it's so interesting like how many different answers like everyone has and it's very inspiring and you get like lots of interesting recommendations so don't hesitate to do that and as always i see you back bye